It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Junior DJ's at. I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable. And, of course, I have some great DJs with me tonight. As always, uh, we have some of the crew here. Um, <clears throat> don't wait for DJ Fire to come back. He's uh, uh, he's out doing his other job. I know he said he was doing some cleanups today. I was in contact with him. He has a landscaping business and because here in the Midwest, it's getting um, warm pretty quickly. And today up here in Chicagoland was, the, uh, you know, in the th mid 30s. So I think down there, they're in the upper 40s, lower 50s. So he's out taking care of his customers, which sets what he needs to do, take care of his business. I know that uh, Matt doesn't get the same weather we get here in Chicago, nor Hunter. They're both lucky <laughs> where they're at, in either in SoCal or in the South, in good old South Carolina. Uh, but Brettley and I had to deal with Midwest winters and weather. And because he's beyond the great Cheddar Curtain up there in the great state of Wisconsin, he has to deal with a little bit more weather than I do because he's closer to Minnesota than oh. I am, of course. It, and, it finally um, stopped snowing yesterday. There it you finally go. stopped snowing. It stopped. It stopped. It stopped. There you go. And, you know, it is a, a great thing to talk about stuff. And then <laughs> I have to apologize. I'm still getting over being sick. Um, I actually have some uh, taste and smell today. So it's uh, starting to come back uh, on uh, on Saturday a little bit. So I'm going treading the right uh, direction. And I took, I took uh, a vid test and it came back negative. So I don't know what it is, but it was uh, yeah. it was kicking me. So with that said, I know I I sent a thing to both uh, Matt and uh, DJ Brentley and Hunter. I didn't get a chance to send it to you because the fact that I wanted to explain to the audience as well as to you. Uh, one of the other DJs here, uh, Braylon, uh, was in a video of a, another DJ. And I don't like to call out DJs because... Uh, especially DJs who don't want me to agree with someone for something. Um, I don't want to call other DJs out. I don't like doing that. Uh, only thing reason why I'm saying it right now is because I don't agree with his method. If you don't agree with someone uh, taking video from someone else's YouTube channel and then put it on your video and making a video and saying, Hey, you know what? And, and just basically, uh, I don't I don't agree with this. You shouldn't do this. This looks horrible. Instead of getting a constructive criticism, like we try to do here, try to share things and try to uh, give information. That's the reason why you know I started this this show was to spread information, to make friends, to give information, and to help people out, make people better DJs, make them better business owners, make them better at their skills and. It's to share information, you know, that we've, the things we've done wrong, the things we've done and the way we look at things and maybe help someone out there. And that's what the goal is of this, of this show. But when I see a DJ um, do that, especially to someone who has been on the panel, who is, uh, wants to give information just like we do, I, I'm very saddened when I see someone do that. And uh, again, I'm not going to say names, I'm going to say anything like that, but I'm going to say that um, I, I, I don't like that. I don't approve that. And we won't do that here. But let me ask the panel of this one here. Let's start off with this question. Um, do you think that a, another DJ, you know, does something not hundred percent, you know, doesn't matter what it is on Facebook on YouTube, Instagram, whatever, um, that you don't agree with, do you go out and try and call them out or do you try to talk to them and have a conversation with them and say, hey, uh, I don't agree with you on X. This is why oh. I don't agree with you, but I understand why you're doing it. You know, hey, you need to do what's, you know, like how I look at it, do the best for you. So Hunter, we're going to start with you. It, I know you've had people come up to you and say stuff to you. you oh, know, yeah, mostly, yeah, mostly on my YouTube live streams, they always tell me stuff and that I don't really agree with and I just go off since I do have autism it's part of who I am and when someone does something same, same yeah when someone says something like that 
yeah, I just go off and, and I do do explain why I can't do certain things or why I can't buy certain things. Oh no, I, I understand that. And I, I've been seeing your live streams. I've seen you get I and that's not bad. I, yeah. I've seen you get upset. Yeah, we've got yeah, we've had I've also seen you and I, I I've also seen you give it a few minutes and then explain and calm down and relax and go right back to to it. And you know, I I know that you have some struggles with you know with with, with you have with autism, and that you still work through that. And again, you're still a heck of a DJ. You still have, you still have a business. You still at the end of the day have to account to your customers. But the thing is, I, the the thing is that again, I don't like to see anyone attack anyone, and I don't want to see anyone attack you or nor anyone in this panel nor. I, I would hope none of no one in this panel will attack anyone either. But it's 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 one of the things that we as DJs, I feel we're very hypercritical of each other. Instead of again giving some kind of uh, constructive criticism and saying, hey, you know, hey, you, 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 you know, some, some zip ties or some cable ties, you know, I don't do scrims anymore, I don't do this, I don't do that. You know, constructive criticism is one thing, but Sometimes, you know, it's also, you know, how people just say things. And uh, DJ Brentley, I, I don't know if you get it on your channel, uh, anyone saying anything about stuff, or how do you usually handle your... Well, uh, I have your an interesting pers perspective on it all, because I have, I had to deal with somebody we call DJ Dumb ASS, and yeah, lacrosse is a super small town. If you fart, a lot of people are going to know about it, so to speak. And I was this dude's manager at a club I was running when I first moved here and later became the res their main DJ on the weekends. But so over the course of a year and a half, two years with dealing with this guy, it, I mean, I played into his back and forth a little bit, talked some smack about him. But and with with all of that and all the headaches and drama it brought because his wife is just a little off if you ask me but i could be totally wrong but she wears the pants in the family and yeah it's been a non-stop like they continually badger me but whatever it's actually been something i was able to turn around and be like go ahead and do that you just keep talking trash like you have to the rest of the crew here you know which is the entirety of the populace in this area, DJ wise, and there's a good 150 within an hour of here, give or take. And moreover, it's actually helped me help them to endear themselves to me or vice versa. And you're on the Driftless DJs page, for example. That's something I started curating, and it kind of came to lot. It kind of started working more and more for the collective, so to speak, where we can change ideas, swap gigs and all of that and this was after i had this big fallout with this one cat and nowadays if people want to troll me give me a hard time i if it's on any of my pages i delete it i won't even reply with it i will delete and ban the user there's no reason to get into it with somebody on my business page or even part and parcel of my personal page to that could be anything but complimentary business so yeah, if you, and if they if it's a trolley question, but they're or a trolley kind of attitude, so to speak, but they're looking for an answer, like I wouldn't do that, blah 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 blah. Well, here's why I'm doing this, and you'll see in some of my gig logs, I will be straight out, and this is why I did it this way. There, like uh, one that's gotten a few thousand hits uh, was my up at Pepin in uh, Villa Balazza, and someone's like, "Well, I would have brought extra speakers." I'm like. Yeah, I did, but you didn't see them when I was focusing everything in, and I dropped the speaker in after the ceremony for speeches and whatnot, and then tore it down afterwards. The guy's like, that makes a lot of sense. I'm like, there's no reason to have extra speakers sitting around the entire afternoon or bring extra gear if I don't need to. Rather than that, I can, because I had a little backdoor entrance back by the DJ booth, I was able to walk in, drop my speaker right there, and I was good to go again. But there's a there's a lot of that, and I won't really play into it. I will answer the question and try to redirect it into a nice and calming kind of approach to it, maybe. But I certainly don't want to play that game anymore. It's just not worth it. 
it's detrimental to your business, your name, however you want to look at it. So what about you, Matt? If you have someone, let's say in your comments, <laughs> that is um, not being nice and stuff like that, what would you usually, what do you usually do? Well, everyone loves me, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> well, everyone on YouTube hates me. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I don't. You're light. I don't respond to comments anyway, like 95% of the time. Sometimes I'll like them or like give a thumbs up. But like my thing with, with YouTube, like my channel is not to help other DJs and give away secrets. My channel is to showcase my work to my clients. So like, I'll like, if somebody messages me, like if they really want to know, like what lighting am I using or what is this? Like I encourage them to message me because I don't just like posting it out there for everybody to see and then copy and, and take ideas. I think that's what makes a lot of us different is some of the unique solutions we've come up with, with for certain problems and i mean sharing it is great and all but like you got to think like you know there's not many other djs that are on youtube in my area so it's not that big a deal but like if i was over where dj bar is where you know there's a hundred different dj companies in new jersey and they're all phenomenal like what's going to make one person better than the other is like you know i don't know they have their secrets and whatnot but i don't really i don't really have too many people like give negative comments um i just laugh it off sometimes like the only time i get comments is like uh that's that uh that audio setup is way too much or that's too much bass or so overkill and i'm just like i'll take it as a compliment um but i don't know i, I try not to give people a reason to to make a bad comment but i don't know i you can't you can't let it i mean you got to think youtube is full of trolls uh so it's you're bound to have a couple bad apples that that guy you were mentioning had commented a couple times on mine but uh he only found one small little negative thing to say and then four months later was like your gig is awesome i forget what he said exactly but so i don't know i mean youtube is a great tool especially with gig logs to sell to couples mm -hmm. it may when i i will say there was a big change when i in what i was booking and where I was getting booked at in this area when I started putting more gig logs out. And so it's all, it's become habit now to video all of my ones for um, weddings. And, you know, like with trading, with trade secrets, I'm like, again, I guess I'm in a smaller market, so I'm not as worried about it and knock on, and I'm able to supplement my wedding gigs with club money. And I actually made a video I'm going to post up in the next couple of days about it. But because of that, I guess I have a little bit, I know, and Mitch Taylor, who uh, runs Taylor Weddings up in the UP, who coaches us, uh, both MC stuff and, and in the business aspect, but he's like, you're able to do all this. You shouldn't worry about getting booked anymore. If you stay on this path, keep growing. And with that, growing the business meant growing the money coming in, where I'm able to keep buying more, the stuff that's coming out and affordable that I know I can sell it to the couples in my in my market. So that's giving me a lot more. Like everybody and their grandmother has a TV booth now. And right. it's gotten, yeah, some of my couples have asked me if I have one. And I'm like, yeah, I'm getting one. I'll have it this April. So with that, it's going to be an upsell. I'm not carrying that thing around with me. But with all the facades I've got, that's been the other half that really helps that stick out and makes more sellable points for me. And with that on YouTube and how I post about my weddings on Facebook, because Facebook in this market seems to really still have a big hold on almost the entire demographic. Everybody here has a Facebook page. Most people have Insta. If you're under 30, you have Snap. TikTok is a mixed bag. And marketing to all those has been a big kind of challenge to get the right target demographic where I'm sending my stuff. And that to me is is a big thing is that um, actually Hunter just sent me a message. He, he lost his internet, so he should be back in a little bit. So we'll give him a minute or two. And, you know, it, it, it's it's a hard thing because as a, you know, uh, someone who is on, you know, YouTube and stuff like that, uh, we all want to, you know, make everyone that you possibly can happy. And we want to make sure that, you know, our customers see us and look at us as professionals. And, you know, other DJs, 
you know, again, I, I like helping other people out. I like having that friendship with people, making that friendship and, you know, you know, crossing bridges and making it fun. And that's, that to me is, is the big thing. And having, um, having anyone, you know, talk badly about anyone in the, in the group here, uh, you know, again, I, 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 I don't understand it, but you know, it is what it is. And having someone, you know, say something about someone, I, I'm, I'm very just, dis- you know, I'm back. Yep. Sorry about that. My mom. So it was, either, yeah, it was either my mom or my dad that had reset the router. Oh, you gotta love that. <laughs> uh, they didn't tell me that they were resetting the router. Modern technology. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love it, you know. And that that's that's you know one of the things when the pitfalls of being. Being a DJ can uh, can do that. You know, even at the uh, um, good evening, uh, Adrian. E., uh, even if you're out somewhere at a uh, venue, you can run into uh, no interwebs here and there, and it kind of sucks and stinks. And you know, what can you do? But it, it, to me, it's um, it, it, it it sometimes inconvenience is uh, also a uh, what's it uh, mother of invention. Sometimes you know, grabbing your phone, use a hotspot, so forth, so on. But I knew Hunter was going to be back here. He was he was messaging me. So, you know, things like that happen, uh, you know. So the next thing we're going to go and talk about here. Um, Did I miss anything? No, no. We're just talking about, you know, again, about people. We don't, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't agree with someone, you know, uh, they don't agree with you. What do you do? Um, the next, next thing I want to talk about is... Um, with summer coming on, with what spring coming on and going into summer, and I saw that like uh, DJ Brentley, I saw you today getting your stuff together and uh, testing equipment out. Um, which we need to get you some new lights. <laughs> we got the blood mine. We can't get you honestly. Some, we, we gotta get I've got something than the blinders. Um, I've got an entire garage full, but more often than not. When I'm talking to couples before I'm going out there, 99% of my couples don't want me to strobe anything. So those strobes and lasers are literally sitting in a case on the top of my garage shelf that if anybody asks for, I will bring them out. Because I use record box and all my lights are in every one of my laptops, every light is already DMXed and controlled into it. So I can just literally plug it in and make you know set the show the way I want it already. So I could do it, but no one, most couples really do want a, and I, you know, something kind of, cla- you know, classy that's not like the wash effects, for example. Those to me, and a lot of couples agree, look kind of cheesy at times. And they might be great lights for what they do, but I'm not trying to put on some crazy, you know, light show or anything. I'm definitely trying to make it very, like you know my setups are super clean looking very neat very orderly and not overwhelm everyone with all the other stuff you're not there to get blown away by it for the most part and yeah a few couples have asked me for this year especially can you bring out the rest of your rig i'm like yeah if you want it i have it but and that's when i make sure i get together photographers beforehand or at least go over everything to make sure they've talked to the couple about lights during the first dance so they don't have to, you know, Photoshop things out, all of that stuff. But more often than not, couples really want a stripped down light rig out of it. See, and- like, see, like me for first dance, I don't turn the lights on until if I do up lighting, it, they're the stagnant color of the room all the way until the dance floor opens. Once the dance floor opens, mm-hmm. then we go into color changing. Other than that, I don't turn dance lights on, uh, you know, moving heads, if there's moving heads in that the package. Uh, anything like that, even the Asteras, you know, the Asteras are all either they're adding light to the dance floor to help the photographer, you know, uh, or they're off, you know, if they're not up lighting. And that's that, that to me is, I'm, I'm not a fan for when you walk into a room and the lights are flashing and stuff like that. Cause to me, I feel that the DJ is like, look at me, here I am over here versus, you know, making it, you know, I, I go to a blind grandma. I just don't want a blind grandma. But get into exactly. the question. Um, since again, you're testing your stuff out and stuff like that. Have you found anything that from last year to this year that's not working? 
no. I thought I was having an issue with my light rig. And I just, and that's what, you know, like with uh, the record box DMX box, I thought something might be wrong with it. And that was why I wanted to check on my lights today. And I only brought the main course of what I use. And I'm like, if everything works with these, my sends and all of that, I know everything's fine. But that, and that's what I've been doing since my last wedding in January. The week after that, I had an, actually here, my entire checklist that I've been going through on of all the stuff I want to get through. And outside of like repainting some of my stands and because I dinged a couple of the grills up on my speakers, I want to clean those up again. And this is just, you know, moving them, you know, strip them off, give them a quick, you know, flat black, all that. Same with my stands. I'll do that as soon as it warms up outside and that'll take me like a half a day. And I've got my, the new, the van I bought, which I want to do a few things inside of it before the season starts, just to make moving gear around a little easier. And my daughter says also because my van is scary. It's, you know, it's the, it's the Bundy van, you know, one of the classics. And <laughs> yeah, no, wait, is, is, is it a shagging wagon that has, you no. know, the carpet yeah. inside the back and kidnapping van. my daughter says it looks like a kidnapping van and yes, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> You didn't put free candy on it. You didn't put it under free candy and puppies inside, did you? <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. But I, there's a few good things I want to do to that. But I've been slowly getting through all my gear, all my company DJ gear, and gearing up. So at a minimum, at least the first, you know, all right, let's go. This is our first weekend. Everybody's out. Goes okay, hopefully. <laughs> and then things will start breaking shortly thereafter, which I've got a surplus of gear in my garage that people can take from. But yeah, I'm, I wanted to make sure my gear's ready. I had to replace a speaker because yeah, I pushed one of mine too hard last weekend. And rather, I'm like, okay, it's 300 and some change to replace it if I go to my friend or it's 200 and some change to get new compression driver, new woofer and do, a, I'm like, no, I'll just buy a new speaker and I have, an ex, I have extra parts if I blow something else up. But that's the first one I've blown up in five years. Not bad. So Hunter, DJ Cool Thing, I know you got a gig this coming weekend, 30th birthday Saturday. party. Yeah. Have Saturday, you been testing Saturday. your gear? And if so, have you found anything not 100%? Nope, not really. I, I didn't really get time to test the gear. It's been so busy lately. And still with my music and everything, I just didn't have time to pull it out and test it out. But, but I know everything is working 100% because I don't really use it all that much. Don't have much uh, gigs since um, for at least last year or two. Well, you've had, you had New Year's Eve. You had a gig. For, you had your no. party, right? No. You Remember, I was party? sick. Oh, okay. I was sick. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got sick when I was in Vegas. We had to miss out on <coughs> New Year's Eve. Yeah, we had to miss out on New Year's Eve. Oh, man, that, that stinks. Well, yeah. again, now you got the party this weekend. We're looking forward for a gig log on that. Make sure, if you have not done so already, make sure you click the like and subscribe button here if you're on YouTube. And also make sure you go through and follow their channels as well. Hunter will have, you know, DJ Cool Thing Entertainment will have a video up for his gig log. And speaking of gig logs, I know the man who had tons of gig logs who I always like to watch. You always like to send me gig logs. And I always, when I get a chance, I sit down and watch them because it's it not sound bad. It, it's it's great seeing how everyone does everything. It's really cool a lot of times with uh with Matt DJ Solsis, where he does a lot of things, especially with the uh, the COT cannons and a lot of the uh, hypeness he has with the parties. Um, now, Matt, I know you have a lot of different gear, and we've talked about gear many times, especially subwoofers and speakers and so forth. And I know you don't really have a huge break like we do in the Midwest because you don't have the snow and cold like we have here and you have a lot of outdoor venues. Do you have a, do you take a time to go through and do an inventory and check your equipment and to make sure everything is working hundred percent or you just go gig to gig to gig to gig and if something's not I working, just, you just say, okay, you need to replace it or repair it. Yeah, I go gig to gig to gig. I mean, I've I've always got, I mean, I don't buy crappy gear, so I don't have to worry about it usually. Um, knock on wood. But uh, I've never had issues with audio or controllers or laptops or anything. Um, 
but like if i'm at a gig and like a cable's not working i throw it out obviously i don't usually replace cables i buy cables every once in a while i just got a bunch of brand new hosa reen r-e-a-n it's like their their premium line it's better than the edge i guess um they're really thick well-made cables um and just because i was like i wanted to get like a fresh set um since i was kind of mismatching a bunch of different cables and whatever um but i don't really no i don't check stuff i don't even like test like i just got an rcf mixer um like a, the rcf version of a behringer and uh i hadn't tested it out but used it for the first time this weekend and it's an awesome mixer um uh, still trying to tweak the mics a little bit it's it's kind of the gain structuring on all these mixers is totally different so like behringer has a ton of gain when you put it in a mic input versus the the rcf you actually have a gain knob that you need to crank pretty high um so I don't, but I don't, the only stuff I like test and I mean, yeah, like recently what I did, um, cause I had a week off, I cleaned all my uplights, by the way, if you have a white uplights, magic eraser, phenomenal for scuffs and everything made them look like brand new. Um, so I cleaned up all my uplights. I readdressed them cause I got an extra 10. So now I have 30, I got a rolling case for 10 of them. So I put all the, all the white ones. I like to cycle them. So like I'll, I usually bring out, um, 12 for my smaller package uh and between 20 and 30 for bigger packages so i cycle them because i'll use like 12 black ones for three months and then i'll flip them and use the white ones um so now i'm just using all the white ones now and have the black ones as extras so yeah i did some labeling a little bit of light light programming updating i still have those those led towers that was in one of my stories a, a month or so ago i'm trying to program those this week um uh, but otherwise yeah i mean i just I rely on stuff to work. I don't buy crappy stuff. I just, you know, I, I like stuff that I can throw around and I know is going to work well. So things that are disposable that like I found that were great, um, like Amazon speaker stands, phenomenal, probably the best speaker stands I've ever used. And I got them when they were like 18 bucks a piece. Um, and I throw them around and they stand up great. The knobs are great. Uh, I just, my rock and roller, I've always hated rock and roller. You've, you've heard that before. Um, my cart finally broke. Um, the frame bent out of shape and it wouldn't collapse. And so, uh, and I speaking threw, of cars, I, yeah, speaking yeah. of cars, my, my dad just went somewhere and got me a new cart. So, oh, cool. Yeah, no, yeah I got, so, yeah, yeah, I got me a new cart, real sturdy. The rock and roller. Uh, so I finally that I was happy to throw it in the dumpster and I got the I know. Rockville rock. I know. The, one of the wheels actually broke off on my rock and roller car. So I was like, yeah. forget it. I'm using that. Because they're made, they're made so cheaply. And so Rockville has a heavy duty, what's similar to R12 RT, which is the one I had. Um, the brakes actually keep the wheels locked. It doesn't have any tiny little tabs that bend off when you're trying to pull it up a hill. It's the best cart. It's heavier, but it's the best, sturdiest cart I've ever used. Uh, and it's like 180 bucks from Rockville. So if you're looking for a better version of a rock and roller rockville makes a great product oh, cool and and it comes fully assembled you don't have to put those stupid wheels on you don't have to bend the little tabs around uh i yeah so mm -hmm. i i me and my my small rock and roller cart still works great but they're bigger ones the wheels would always wobble back and forth and uh, I, I was happy to get rid of that well one of the things that i would highly recommend i picked up and I actually i did an unboxing on it and I am going to be using it uh, shortly. This is from NLFX Pro. This right here, this little bag here, it's $69. It's a, a cable tester. And it is... an awesome cable tester. It oh. has XLR. It has uh, speak on. It has power con, it has HDMI, it has USB, uh, it has mini, it has USB B, USB A, it has even um, for RJ, um, what's RJ11, uh, the inter internet cables. Um, you can get an adapter with it too to get BNC connectors. Uh, it has RCA, uh, so you can test your RCA cables. Uh, runs on a nine volt battery. Uh, sixty-nine dollars. Pretty easy, simple. You know, basically lights right here tell you green good. You know, red, you're dead. 
Um, really easy, simple to deal with. Uh, $69, something to have in your toolbox. They have them in stock. NLFX Pro, I would highly recommend it. Even comes with, and this is a cool thing, even comes with connectors and you can actually test. So you can actually test continuity for cables. Uh, I wouldn't do it for power, but you can test continuity for cables too. So if you're good, you can, you can see if a cable is actually good or not. And if you have, you know, uh, power through it. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because again, it's one of the things that this time of year and Matt, you hit it on the head, swapping out cables, replacing stuff like that and buying good stuff. Uh, I would definitely would recommend for 70 bucks. I would definitely recommend one of these um, very compact, very small, easy to have around, easy to carry around. Doesn't weigh much. Uh, you go to get a warranty on it too. Uh, they have a one year and two year warranty on it for a few bucks extra. Uh, I definitely would say you get the BNC connectors because then you could test the uh, cable for antennas. So if you're running in cabling for antennas, uh, it's a couple bucks extra. So I think it's like five or six bucks extra, if I remember correctly. I'm doing it off the top of my head, but it, it's one of the things that NLFX Pro, you guys did a heck of a job with this. Um, Again, they're they're DJs that own a uh, own a DJ company. They have some great products there, but I would definitely would recommend that to anyone out there uh, for product wise. And then um, when you're going through stuff, and again, what Matt replaced in the, his cart with uh, getting rid of the rock and roller cart, and I could tell you, uh, Tracy hates our rock and roller cart. Uh, I have uh, oh god, was it? It's a uh, I have three of them. Um, and I can't remember the name of the company because they switched names from the original one I bought. But they hold up to 750 pounds. The carts are heavy duty. Um, I had to look what it is, to tell you the truth. But it, it's 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 one of the things that um, if you're going to do a cart, you want to get something that's going to be robust. It, it it's it's a it is a a necessary tool. And I'm typing in as I'm talking to you guys here. Uh, they got cartridge. And it, they're not, they're not, they're not cheap. I could tell you that. But the thing is that it is something that um, I would highly recommend. If you're going to spend money for something. Uh, get good equipment. Don't, don't, don't skimp on a cost of equipment. Cheap equipment's not good. Good equipment's not cheap. And that's the thing is that spend the money, spending money on stuff and, you know, get what you can afford, obviously. And you can't always get top of the line, but again, save up and get get what you can get and then work your way up. Uh, one of the things that um, I wanted to ask you guys on the yes, no question for today. And I see that your partner there is. Uh, yep. Yep. She's ready for the yes, no question. So I'm going to let, look at it, make sure she answers a question too on this one. Cause this is, this may be not just for DJs. You know, this is for, this could be for general people too, for everyone else, as well as DJs. Um, she's running away now. She's about to play a prank on me. Oh, uh, no. Me. So the question is, for you guys, are you ready for opening season of baseball? And are you ready for this? Who cares about baseball? What? I said, who cares about baseball? What? Agreed. Agreed. It's the most Not boring bad. sport there is. I'd rather watch golf. Oh. I mean, I, I, I'll watch it in October when it's the playoffs, but 162 games or 183, whatever they play, like, it's too much. No, None of them matter. It's like, oh, we just lost 10 or 15 in a row? No biggie. We got another 120. Like, is I you like it because you're in Chicago and you got the Cubs, and they finally won the World Series a couple years ago. Wait, 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 wait. The who? Oh, you're not a Cubs fan. No. 
No, I, I like real baseball. I like the White Sox. Oh. The, the minor league team oh. on the north side, there's people who like that minor league team. And uh, Brelly is one of those people who likes that. Minor, minor league team. team. Minor league team. Minor league team. <laughs> You know, my wife is one of them also. Adrian E, he's got the, he's got White Sox tickets. He's a White Sox fan, like I am. Mm-hmm. You know, speaking of baseball, I used to play T ball back in the nineties, and my team was the Dodgers. We're talking yeah, the late, there you go. Yeah, we're talking the late nineties here. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. But getting ready for uh, baseball season coming up. <laughs> I'm ready. Baseball. Do you have favorite. in your music library do you have a great song that if someone wants an intro for baseball feeling intro do you, <coughs> god do you have that song ready mm-hmm. and i get a lot of people... that song in your library that you feel it's great for baseball and i've had a lot of well, sorry matt go ahead go ahead i was saying i don't have baseball intros um but like in the month of February, I had two different people ask for their intros to be the Chicago Bulls theme by Alan Parsons. You'd, you'd recognize it if you heard it. Yeah. Um, so we have we have a lot of Lakers and and uh, just basketball fans in general being you know in LA and SoCal area, but not a. I mean, there's Dodgers fans here, but we're not a we're not a baseball area and orange county itself like the angels suck so nobody really <laughs> we we like the i i'm not a hockey person but there's a lot of ducks fans here and chargers fans i love hockey football, local, football's the way to go yeah our local team is doing really good the hurricanes yeah i like football i, I don't really know baseball is whatever so yeah. okay so hunter are you ready for baseball season or rule football season or any season with some sport music ready to go. If you have a sports fan who wants to uh, get intros into something, either be it serious from Ellen Parsons project for like for the Bulls intro, or do you do, do you have anything else? I probably don't have anything. I just no. have the, yeah, I just have the typical music that you all, like we all play at like parties and stuff. I don't really have anything baseball related or sports yeah related. i don't i don't keep it cached in my library but i have it on spot like that's the thing I, I have an ipad at all my gigs with cell connection so anytime somebody requests something for spotify like i always you know i always have at least spotify so even if i can't mix it in perfectly like i at least you know can play it i don't know i trend like when when people have really odd requests that I <laughs> up, i'm never gonna play again after the wedding i delete it from my library because i'm like i don't i don't want it clogging up my playlists and my recently added playlists that I, you know, go off a lot of times if I'm looking for new stuff. So I, uh, I just, add, I just add and add and add, add, I, you know, that delete, I try to delete like multiples. So I'm not having, you know, like, uh, you know, a, a song 30,000 times, but you know, I, I, you know, being a, uh, a white Sox fan and, uh, being a town that has two, uh, Two groups of people who like uh, uh, baseball, uh, people who love baseball and the people who uh, go to a game and watch basically um, themselves drink and, um, well, say drink a lot there, Wrigley. Wrigley's, Wrigley's known for drinking. Oh, yeah. That's a, if you, if you oh, want to yeah. go to a party, Wrigley's, Rig, Wrigley's known for his drinking. That's that's one of the things is that I, I've been to Cubs games um, and I've been to Sox games, of course. And I can say Wrigley is Wrigley, especially getting the bleachers get out there. They're drinking pretty heavily. So DJ Brantley, I know you're a Cubs fan. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Are you ready for baseball season? I'm a fan, but I really because how crazy my schedule has gotten, I'm really I only thing I really pay attention to now is the news. And that's to see if any, you know, anything would affect, you know, COVID closures like they were. And I'll watch Chicago news. But for sports and all that, for example, I do have a crate that I call Anthems. That, And I've collected this over the last you know few years and actually did a little bit of research into it. Because I'm in Wisconsin and people love their sports teams, one, you know, like we've got Madison, jump around. <laughs> You've got the Green Bay Packers, bang on the drum. And DJing at Stadium View really kind of led me to making the Anthems crate 
where I can play like, you know, House of Pain Jump. There you go. And don't forget, um, during hockey season, Chelsea's Dagger. Yep. But yeah, I've well, got but I've got that whole array of uh <laughs> different things that you know that yeah you can use at sports stuff like uh whoop there it is or being from Chicago I even have you know go Cubs go in there and from the Harry Kara Carey era of uh hosting the Cubs Van Halen's jump I even oh, yeah that oh. out, man because yeah yeah I got stuff like that who, who in Chicago you know not so bad who in Chicago here does not you know, even though again I'm not a Cubs fan, uh, all of a sudden you have double G in on Channel Nine, and you hear the beginning part of Jump, and you knew it was Harry Carey coming on. It was time to change the channel for me in our house. So, <laughs> like, oh, Harry Carey's coming on. Oh, great! And I, I can remember my dad's a lot of times. Oh, great! We're gonna hear a, a drunk guy talk about the Cubs. Great, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, my whole, my whole family is Sox fans, except. No, growing up now, my baby brother is a Cubs fan. I don't know why he became a Cubs fan. He's like, I, I guess, the black sheep of, of baseball for the family. So everybody else is, you know, Sox fans, and he's a Cubs fan. So I got, I got to get my, um, I, I got to get, uh, I, I got to make sure the rest of the family stays Sox. So I have uh, that to take care of. And uh, here, here's one of the fun things: my, uh, my dad passed away. Um, uh, cause he was a big Sox fan and, um, we wanted to honor that, uh, his, uh, uh, communion card had, uh, the White Sox insignia on the back of it. So I have and those of, and it's yeah, White speaking, Sox on the back of the of it. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the Cubs, we, um, our local minor baseball team, the Pelicans are an affiliate with the Cubs. So they're on par with the Cubs then. Okay. Yeah. With the minor, uh, the Myrtle Beach Pelicans. Well, again, that's, that's no different than the Cubs. They're a minor league team, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the thing that Chicago guys do. They we we jaw on each other. Oh yeah, we're, we're oh, family yeah. when it's uh, football for the. <laughs> excuse me for the Bears. We're family for the Blackhawks. We're family for the Bulls. But when it comes time for it's baseball, there's a deep divide oh. in Chicago. It's either your White Sox or your Cubs. <laughs> there's no gray matter. You know, there's a player that's no longer on the Blackhawks, and that's Patrick Kane, number 88. Yep. Uh, See, yep. And, this, and I will say that when the Hawks in, what was it, 88, 89, started trading off uh, or uh, 98, 99, when they didn't make, they got swept by Philadelphia, they traded everyone. It was like dollar bills bargain basement sale and it completely turned me off to want to watch the hawks anymore well again they're, they're, they're the rebuild um my sister-in-law is a huge hawks fan she has uh did her and my sister i mean my sister and my wife both tracy and my sister-in-law have gone to tons of hawks games uh they bought ticket packages they didn't do uh full like full season tickets but he bought a package with a bunch of tickets and next year, they're not sure they're going to do it again uh, for a little bit to see what happens with the team. They may buy individual tickets here and there, but they only have to buy a package. But it, it's, it's one of the things that, you know, again, we as DJs always should be prepared because we have a lot of people out there, customers of ours, we're sports fans. And I've done the, the Bulls intro four times. So, you know, serious, um, and then going in, you know, saying, you know, and now and get into all that and, you know, yelling on the mic and hyping people up and stuff like that. And especially here in Chicago, it's it's just people get that hype feeling. They're like, oh, especially when they, they hear that and the bass drops on on serious and you have that treat, that beat. And I will tell you, Ellen Parsons, you know, you know, he didn't he did that song. It's the beginning of the you know, eye in the sky. That part right there, I don't think he ever thought would be as popular, just like Chelsea's Dagger is for the Blackhawks here. Um, but also, I you know, never heard the that song, song I always like to have ready, and especially with baseball fans and play through a cocktail and dinner time. Um, when I talk to people, I do have Go Cubs Go, and then I follow up by Don't Stop Believing, which is the White Sox song. So, you know, it's like, yeah, okay, I, I Go Cubs Go, and people are singing along to that. 
And I go, well, I think the White Sox are a better song. And I start playing Don't Stop Believing. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, put me in coach, John Fogarty. Um, that song right there, classic baseball song, especially I know people who are baseball fans. That's something to throw in there into, you know, cocktail. Uh, it is an upbeat song. It's a great song. It's, you know, it's an older song. But people hear that, they think right away baseball because he's talking about baseball. And I still remember the video for it on MTV, which I guess I'm putting me myself as old. And, you know, seeing the old baseball stuff from the 80s, the guys, you know, doing plays, making plays, making mistakes, doing errors. And it's just, you know, it's just a great song to have around for baseball season, especially beginning because um, all the teams right now in spring in spring training and opening day is right around the corner, you know, for both the Sox and the Cubs here, as well as teams around the country. And I feel that as DJs, we should be prepared for that. So the last yeah, thing yeah, there's, I- yeah, there's actually one song in my mind that has to do with baseball, Swing by Trace Atkins. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So the last part that's, last that's a good show, swing. That's a good swing dance song, too. The la- the last part I have for the show tonight is uh this. Um so If you had to um, close your business up tomorrow, you had to close your business up because you won a million dollars or you won $10 million. You had to retire your business. You know, you're like, Hey, you know what? I'm, 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 I, I won all this money. I'm going to give my, you know, all the DJ, you know, all the gigs to so-and-so. If you had to close your business up tomorrow for whatever reason, um, what would you do with your gear? Would you donate it to another DJ who needs that gear? Would you sell it, or would you keep it and you it my- and just have a party at your house all the time? Yeah, I'd put it in my house. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably do that. I'll probably either do that or donate it to a thrift store. Uh, okay. Put it on us. I want to. I want to blow the roof off the place with my eighteen twenty ones. Watch movies and true surround sound and, and feel the bass like a like an AMC theater, but like one with upgraded sound. I don't know if you've seen those yet. Those are dope. Yeah, you, you want you want to basically have your ears bleeding from Terminator Two when when the foot comes down on the on the head, it crushes the skull in T two. The Terminator doing that. You don't want to feel the bass you know, like you know in your seat. You want to feel the bass in your chest and you're coughing and you yep. can't breathe. Then <laughs> the um, uh, DJ Brentley, what what we do do. Uh, I I will definitely keep my decks and probably at least one simple setup of some kind. But it, the my daughter did point out the custom made facades her grandpa made I would keep. But aside from that, I would probably donate it to some you know some kid trying to learn or coming up. I mean, there was a lot of people that you know hooked me up with some really good deals when I can't you know was starting weddings here and really getting into it full time and i would hope that i could pass some of that on Mm -hmm. don't know i mean and that day may come when i actually want to give all this up which i'm i mean or i should say i know it's going to come sooner or later but i just don't want to do it anymore period or at least as crazily as i am now and want to buy property and own a bar so i can you know have something else to fall back on a little bit later in life retirement fund or something there you go. College fund. If, yeah. If if my DJ business doesn't go well, at least I have my church to fall back on because I'm always busy with that. And that, that's the thing is that, you know, I, I don't wish anybody's business to, to go up, you know, but the thing is that, you know, we all have the opportunity and you play the lottery every so often and that, you know, $1 billion hits, you know, again, you, you, you take your customers you have, you know, you give them to a friend, you give them, you know, make sure they're taken care of. Because you, you don't want to be a jerk, but then you go with the equipment. You're like, you know, I, I the equipment I have, I can I can buy all new equipment, or I can, you know, give it, donate, sell it, do whatever. And uh, Adrian E said, I would give it all up to an up and coming DJ, but keep my music. Yeah. I think that's one thing we'd all we would re- agree to at least yeah. keep the music, because all the hard work we put into it, and then you know you have some you know, stuff that like you know. Uh, you know, your dad made parts, uh, you know, made some stuff. 
you know, there's things that you look at and go, yeah, you know, Matt would keep his uh, dual 21s for his surround sound in his room. Um, it would be just him, four dual 21s, and then a couch. That's it, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and like, two tops. It's like Breaking Bad. Remember when Jesse got his own house after he started getting all the money from the the operation that they had? He uh, bought a huge sound system and put it in his house, and, like, they would just throw parties all the time, and he would just sit in front of the speakers and just get lost in it. That's that's what I want. <laughs> Is it uh, was it Memorex or who was it that uh, had the guy sitting in the chair and the sounds coming at him looks like it looks like air? Memorex. Oh, it was, Memorex. It was a of the Memorex. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to say Memorex, but who were? Who yeah, was? It was Memorex. It was Memorex with the cassette tape. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I remember it was a cassette tape company, but I, you know, it was a lot. Is it live or is it Memorex? I remember that their slogan, but. Um, you know, I, I guess that's that's the kind of thing that uh, Matt wants to live life like that. Just have the air like blowing past him and feel feeling the 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 percussion from the uh, the bass. And that's that's the that's the thing is that you know, maybe think of Maxell. Or yeah, Maxell. I might be Maxell. No, is it live or is it Memorex? Yeah. I, think, I, think I know that, it's, was I think that era of commercial. I think it's Maxell because they're. Really big when it comes to yeah, it was Maxell. Maxell, okay. okay, yeah. I I couldn't remember who it was. I'm from like eighty three, eighty four. Yep. <laughs> and that was Maxell. That's an awesome thing. So Matt, you're going off somewhere. I take it you're driving. I I got like uh, it sucks because I I reprogrammed the lasers and put like probably a good four to five hours of work in, and I have two different <laughs> people that are rent renting them before I get a chance to use them. So I'm going to. Get rent them off to somebody else now uh, before I have a chance to even show off the new programming in them. Well, again, I know you'll have a, a fantastic light show, especially with everything you do. Um, I know that uh, your next gig, when's your, ne- when's your next gig? When's your next? Saturday, Saturday every weekend. Saturday? We're always always out. Every We got a wedding this Saturday and then a wedding show on Sunday. So uh busy weekend i just had a wedding show this past sunday and then i have a wedding this coming saturday so um i was talking i was trying to get a hold of the venue today and uh because last week i i just couldn't do it i was under the weather um too far and i'm like okay and i went way to this week to mondays usually people are not there because they work the weekend so usually take monday off tuesday usually there i left a message they didn't call me back i'll give them a call tomorrow but um it's 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 one of those interesting things. It's a venue I've been to before. I just verify stuff um and make sure over a hundred percent. It's 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 always interesting. And you know, one of the things that you guys out there watching the show, again, I, I appreciate you guys talking stuff like that. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't be afraid to click like and subscribe over on YouTube and make sure that you're following everyone's journey here because everyone here has a YouTube channel. Um, and also I want to say, if you have a question, critique, comment, something, put it in the chat in, in YouTube, uh, you know, we will answer those questions, uh, the past couple of episodes, I have not got a chance to put it out there because of being sick. I just put out there a couple weeks ago episode. I got to work on another episode after I got off here and have it ready for very shortly. So, uh, I'm a little behind. So I apologize to you guys for that. If you're watching this. And you see the episodes in front, you see they're pretty quickly, boom, 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 within a few days of each other, uh, which is not normal just because of being ill. So I apologize to you guys. Other than that, um, did you guys happen to see the crazy thing down in Florida with the venue owner that pulled a firearm on a DJ? Yeah, I think that's the most Florida story you can possibly find online in recent times <laughs> the uh the way i understand it the f- uh, owner wanted to leave early uh the wedding was at 11 this is like 10 30 10 40 um long story short he decided to pour a drink on to control the dj the dj and him got into a verbal spat uh and then the owner went and grabbed a firearm and threatened the DJ and threatened people with it. There's video of it on Instagram. Uh, there's video of, if you go on YouTube, you can search for it and stuff like that. Um, 
And, and if I remember correctly, the owner and a manager, I, I again, you had to look at the article. I see the, I know the owner is charged and I think also a, maybe a manager or someone else is charged too. But it's one of the things that, uh, you know, us as DJs, I always feel if even if someone destroys something, I understand we want to protect our, our gear, but also we need to de-escalate something, especially someone deal with someone who is obviously intoxicated. And I much rather go through a civil, uh, you know, conversation with them say, okay, you destroyed my equipment. Guess what? Uh, Mr. Owner, you're going to be uh, putting this on your insurance and uh, you're going to have to pay me for uh, a replacement unit and whatever that cost is, you're going to have to pay. So with that right there in mind, um, and we do with drunks quite a bit, especially if it's a bar gig or a wedding gig or whatever, do you usually you know, try and kill them with kindness or do you usually ignore them? I've only Probably. had one. I had one uh, a a venue where the owner had to shut the party down early because, like, it was a bar mitzvah and the kids were jumping on the furniture, destroying the venue, etc. And so, like, he was like, "No, we're done. Like, you got to shut it off." And I'm like, "You own this place. I'm listening to you. Like, okay. Like, I I wanted to go home. I'm like, this is getting out of control. These kids are gonna break something anyway. So I was like, happy to end it. And then the you know the the host who was like the mother of the bar mitzvah boy was like oh no no just you know keep playing music just just super low and i was like all right and so like we started staring down and i had it like super low for like 15 minutes and then while they were in limbo trying to figure out you know what amount of money would let the owner keep the party going and there was no amount of money so uh we ended up shutting it down but um yeah that's uh if, if somebody yeah that's uh i don't think i'd get into an altercation i'd i'd Hopefully it's on video and take it to court, get your money back and get a new controller. Yeah. And that, that's the sad part when someone does something like that. Um, so I, I, I had to look up the cart, which I told about before. It is a Kane AMG 750 and a Kane uh, AMG um, off-road edition too, which I have both. Um, and there were another, before they were Kane, they were another company, but I, I can remember that. I, I, remember the name of it but it's a a 400 cart it is a big heavy long cart but it can hold 750 pounds and trust me you can load that sucker up it is very heavy very very heavy duty unlike the rock and roller cart which is kind of kind of flimsy Crappy. <laughs> yeah it, it doesn't i get i have one and again it, it's not horrible it's nice and lightweight uh again tracy hates it she doesn't want to deal with it um she's not a fan of it uh but the thing is that you know it, it's, it's like anything else um what do you you know what do you get but i have the uh kane amg 750 at the all-terrain one i have two of those and i have the regular 750 uh and i will tell you that you know i've had the one the first one the regular standard one for uh eight years now and that thing has been Phenomenal. Um, replace parts out and you can order parts from them. Uh, replace stuff on it and it works really great. So no problem, Matt. I'll see you later. Um, he had to hop off because he's at his destination. And we're going to be hopping off here in a second or two. So if you guys have not done so already, make sure you follow us here on Twitch. I appreciate you guys for, for stopping by, saying hi and stuff like that. And also, I appreciate all our panel here tonight stopping by, saying hi, talking, and giving information. Hopefully, DJ Fire, Nathan, you know, we we want you back up here, man. I know you got some work to do. I know you got stuff going on, uh, especially with your review channel and your landscaping business. But please, we want you back here, man. <laughs> Other net guys, you guys have a good night. Peace.